welcome to my cosy corner of the internet. I'm Maya Starr and today's article is titled A Word from Maya Starr Spiritual Philosophy and Inspiration on Your Path. This article is drawn from the Emissaries of the Light series of energy attunements which I channeled in 2019 and 2020. We will look at the purpose and philosophy of Maya Star and my intentions as a spiritual facilitator. We will consider the spiritual path and the importance of the healing journey. And we will discover essential principles we can embrace in order to draw closer to a life of authentic spiritual expression that improves our experience and the experiences of those around us. If you enjoy mysterious and magical spiritual content, please consider subscribing and share this page with your friends and listen to the end for my recommendations for your next step. And now, let's explore. A word from my star spiritual philosophy and inspiration on your path. In 2004, I established Maya Star Academy with the intention of progressing the spiritual lives of others by sharing the fruit of my career as a spiritual facilitator, witch and healer. Maya Star has become a powerful resource for those pursuing their path to wholeness that wish to add energy work to their spiritual practice. Through Maya Star, I hope to provide the kind of empowerment and instruction that builds confidence so that my students continue to work with the tools they receive through working with me. Regular work with these energies can assist you to uncover and realise your unique spiritual gifts. Whether you identify as a light worker, star seed, spiritual seeker or prefer not to limit yourself with labels, I believe the expression of your authentic spiritual self is your birthright. Further, I consider that making the choice to consciously pursue the realisation of your spiritual potential is a sacred endeavour and one that I am honoured to play my part in. I would like to take this opportunity to share some words of advice with you. Based on my experience as both a student and teacher of the spiritual arts over the last 30 years, I recommend approaching energy work and all spiritual practices with as little ego as possible and with the curiosity and courage of a child. Ego-centered consciousness can bind you to a limited vision of yourself and the world. The process of spiritual development has a lot to do with overcoming the limitations of restrictive attitudes of mind, beliefs and thought habits that blind us to our true essence which is the reality of our eternal and divine nature. Ego-centered consciousness is often bound to the concept of an outcome or solution, rather than being present in the moment. Because of that, when ego consciousness is dominant or unbalanced, we lose our natural state of energetic integrity and groundedness because we are psychically devaluing the present moment. Without being mindfully present in the now, we can't experience the full extent or implication of peace, joy, happiness, sadness, grief or love. All human emotions have important lessons for us, but to gain wisdom, we need to be present with them. Regular spiritual practice can help you to become more mindfully present in your life and, over time, 
this translates into a deeper and more meaningful experience of yourself, the world and everyone in it. It's important to realize that limitations of ego-based consciousness are essentially illusory. We will outgrow them if we commit ourselves to our spiritual practice and self-healing journey. But it's also important to understand that the painful and difficult attachments we start out with play a fundamental role in everyone's unique development process. The attachments of the ego create suffering. The suffering compels us to change things and forces us to grow, to exceed the limitations of our consciousness. It would be folly to try to destroy the ego entirely, as the ego is the vehicle through which we navigate the physical world. But problems arise when an unbalanced ego attaches itself inappropriately to things around us or to our thoughts, beliefs and ideas about the world and ourselves. We call this phenomenon ego projection and it's the cause of most human suffering. When properly balanced, the ego matures and becomes the vessel through which the soul finds expression on the physical plane. The ego could be considered a spiritual tool when it's used correctly. You might want to think of the journey of spiritual development as being a process of contextualizing the ego rather than overcoming it. We develop self-awareness by working more with our shadow, hidden and spiritual, eternal aspects in a conscious way and this creates the context that naturally balances the ego over time. Spiritual development is a process and it doesn't happen overnight. It does require you to have some level of faith in the process and in yourself. It requires discipline and sometimes courage. If you're feeling in a hurry about it, that's the ego talking. But assuming you're sincere in your spiritual aspirations, energy work can be a fulfilling, creative and exciting spiritual practice, allowing you to safely explore and further your spiritual growth through healing, manifesting and meditation. I encourage you to explore, experiment and expand your mind with a healthy balance of solemnity and light-heartedness. Practice consistently but not constantly and take yourself seriously enough to record your meditations, healings and thoughts in a journal or diary. This discipline enables you to refer to your own work and start to gain wisdom by learning from your own experience. It also sends an important message to your conscious mind that you're sincere about your spiritual pursuits. The journey of spiritual ascension is a process of balancing and integrating our consciousness. It is also a universal theme that you'll find repeated in different cultures, religions, and spiritual or magical practices all around the world. The paths are many and varied, but the aspiration is the same. You may see it referred to as spiritual development, healing, self-realization, self-actualization, spiritual enlightenment, self-mastery, individuation, the great work, the hero's quest, the fool's journey, the journey of love, gaining of the sight, union with the Godhead, traversing the abyss and ascension. I'm sure you can add a few more, however you choose to define it, ultimately it's the path of perceiving and expressing our eternal nature while fully present in the temporal world. It is my soul-felt wish that your connection to Maya Star, whether you're a student or following Maya Star on YouTube or podcast, contributes positively and progressively to your journey. 
may you find greater wholeness, authenticity and meaning in all aspects of your life through my work. And here's an additional suggestion. Whenever the option presents itself, exploit the opportunity to demonstrate kindness to yourself and to others. The spiritual journey can look messy and chaotic, as well as beautiful and transcendent. Whatever your journey and the journeys of those around you look like, I would encourage you to endeavour to express kindness. This is the simplest way to express your eternal nature in the temporal world, and it costs nothing. The alternative is the way of judgment and competition. It's the way of the limited consciousness of the ego. These are ways in which the ego inappropriately inserts itself into the world around you, creating attachments that cause suffering for yourself and possibly for those around you too. When you judge another person, you create a link with them through your conscious attention, but it's a negative connection. And negative connections are ultimately binding and restrictive. The simplest way to move beyond such restrictive consciousness is to exercise non-judgment. And I have found the most practical way of doing this is to focus on expressing kindness wherever possible. Don't make a big thing of it and don't allow other people to take advantage of you. Just try to notice when your mind makes a judgment about yourself or another person and ask yourself if it's true, appropriate or kind. If it's not any of those things, perhaps you could try to replace it with a kind thought or gesture. When you show kindness, you also learn another important life skill, patience. Whether your life looks the way you think it should or not, it is still your path, your journey of love. No matter how you might lean towards judging it, writing it off or resisting it, your life as it is right now is perfect. You are perfect. That doesn't mean that you feel perfect or behave perfectly, but it does mean that you and everyone you meet is a complete, eternal soul currently expressing itself in the temporal world and bound by the limitations of restricted consciousness that we're all experiencing. Being an eternal soul navigating a temporal world isn't easy for anyone. Consider that just because you have forgotten what it feels like to be a perfect emanation of spiritual love from a single source that unites all of creation and exists eternally, doesn't mean that you're not one. So no matter how it looks or feels or tastes, remember your life is the way it is supposed to be. And the same applies to everyone you encounter. You are an extraordinary person just like everyone else. You are supposed to be here, and this stuff we do here in the temporal world, it's what we're meant to do. The ups and downs of life are sacred and meaningful in ways only our eternal consciousness can fully appreciate. The changes and challenges in your life are no more meaningful, valid or superior to the changes and challenges experienced by those around you. If you judge another person by how their journey of love looks, you're kind of demeaning your eternal nature, whereas demonstrations of love and kindness do the opposite. They balance out the ego and expand your consciousness to be more in alignment with your eternal soul. Perhaps you're not convinced. Well, the ego won't be. It will be listing off the people who don't deserve kindness in many people's minds right now. But I want to encourage you to try it. Try being more consciously kind to yourself and others and see what happens. I will be sharing a recommendation for your next step at the end of this video on YouTube. But first, I'd like to thank you for spending some time with me today. 
I hope you're leaving this video suffused with good vibes and great ideas. On this channel, I share my week ahead spiritual guidance and mystical musings for the collective, meditation soundscapes and energy healing articles to inspire and uplift you on your spiritual path. If you made it this far, please leave your favourite three emojis in the comment section below. And because your engagement really helps me out, if you like, rate, share, subscribe or comment today, I hope and intend that bountiful blessings will be brought to bear in all areas of your life this week. May brilliance, beauty and abundance abound. Why not take a moment to peruse the rest of this channel to discover more of my energy healing articles and relaxing meditations for some additional spiritual sustenance and magical motivation. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll find a great recommendation for your viewing pleasure in the cards at the end of the video. You can also follow me to receive daily spiritual guidance on Instagram. Facebook, Pinterest, Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, TikTok, YouTube, Tumblr, WordPress, Twitter and LinkedIn. You can find links to my social media in the description of this video and links for all my latest offerings can be found on the MyaStar website at www.myastar.net. I upload inspiring spiritual content for you three times a week, so please come back soon. With blessings.